Well, good morning. Good morning, Mayor Red, President Barchi, Chancellor Haddon, governors, trustees, alumni, family, friends, and especially the graduating class of Rutgers Camden. Congratulations. I want to thank you for inviting me here today on one of the most special days of your lives so far. And I want to thank you very much for this honor. Although you have allowed me to wear this gown, you have done me no favors by asking me to speak after Brian Stevenson. <laughs> I feel like they may have gotten the opening act and the headliner mixed up here today. <laughs> I've been wrestling over what information I could offer you that you haven't already heard. Something that can be a reminder of where you came from and also a sign to comfort you on the road ahead. At first, I shared too little, and then I shared far too much. As I edited my thoughts, I realized I sure am blessed that there was no Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram when I was your age. I think I'm just gonna keep all those chapters up here and in here. But I was reminded of a few things that I'd like to share with you. 14 years ago, I gave a commencement speech at another New Jersey school. Through the magic of Google search, I was able to do a back to the future moment, looking back on my words to see if any of what I had to say to the class of 2001 stood up today. Those words started out innocently enough, talking about new beginnings, from kindergarten to high school to college. You can't remember what you had for breakfast yesterday, but I'm sure that you can remember the multitude of emotions that were running through you during the formative years, from sheer joy to anticipation to absolute fear. And then, in a snap of a finger, it's all just memories in a scrapbook. Our future starts in our past, but it doesn't end there. In that speech, I said to treat the workplace like school and keep learning, to be humble, and remain humble, and to remind yourself that no job is beneath you if you use it as a lesson. Maybe you've mapped your life out, a corner office at a Fortune 500 company, or a life in philanthropy, politics, or even entertainment. Great, I say go for it. But if you haven't, that's okay too. Don't be embarrassed by indecision. Life is a long, bumpy road but that makes for an exciting ride. Choose a direction, and if the road turns, turn. If there's a fork in the road, take it. It's okay to map out your future, but do it in pencil. Continuing with the new beginning and planning in pencil theme, it was in 2003, a new chapter in my life began, and my fork in the road brought me here today. In 2003, I became the co-owner of an arena football team in Philadelphia. You talk about bumpy roads, lessons learned, humility, and then divine intervention. Okay, see if you can follow this. Rockstar loves football. Here's about an opportunity to own an arena team. Laughs with his bandmates about calling plays from the owner's box. Then before you know it, calls are made on his behalf to pursue the team. Band sobers up and backs out. <laughs> Singer doesn't. He finds a partner. They start an expansion team called the Philadelphia Soul. In its first five years, it's the league's most popular team and they win a championship for Philadelphia. We approach this team very differently. We use lessons learned in our other lives to put together a winning team on the field, but also to have impact off the field. We make it an affordable, accessible, family affair and proudly announce that we intend to be the most philanthropic team in town. Before the soul ever played it down, we found four needy charities and gave away more money than we brought in. We were having fun playing football and Robin Hood. But then on one bitter cold night in 2006, while I was staying in Philly, I looked out my window and I saw a man sleeping outside. He was huddled up hoping just to make it through the night. I decided that we should focus our philanthropic efforts on the homeless. This issue could affect anyone. It didn't matter if you were young or old, black or white, 
Republican or Democrat. I didn't need a scientist to find the cure. I needed someone to help me help those in need. I asked a close friend to find me someone who was both passionate and compassionate, an authority on the homeless issue. He found me Sister Mary Scullion, and that's how the rock star who had the new beginnings, the bumpy ride, and the pencil came to write the words, the power of we. You, me, that's the power of we. We can be that change we want to see. When I met Sister Mary and her already well-established team at Project Home, we joined forces and nearly a decade later, we continue to address the needs of those in need through that power of we. Now we may have lost some money on the team, but we won on and off the field. So remember that when life brings you challenges, it also brings you opportunities. From rock star to team owner to foundation chair, they're all just mile markers along this journey. And that is the power of we. No one is an island. No one can do it alone. Not government alone, not the private sector alone. It takes great partners, like I've had with Mayor Red and Chief Thompson. It takes great partnerships, like the Heart of Camden and St. Joseph's Carpenter Society and HopeWorks in Camden. It takes everyone from nuns to rock stars. And it takes you. But you already know that, because you've seen it, because you've done it. For me, the issue of hunger and homelessness feels right. For you, it may be something else. So find that something, be passionate about it, and start that ripple. Be that change. That's what you do. That's what you've done. When called upon, your class harnessed change and made it work for justice. You could have easily used technology to relax and play video games, but your class used it as a map to map this community, to make sure that people got services to those who were in need. You could have used your knowledge to manipulate others with less, but you used it to come together to reopen the Cooper Park. You could have used your time for you, but instead, over the course of just one school year, you, the students of Rutgers Camden, did almost 35 years of community service. And that, too, is the power of we. Now, embracing we doesn't absolve you from the responsibility to lead. This world needs its young people to lead and to lead by example, to walk that walk and to do that work. So confound expectations. Inspire others. Don't let anybody ever define who you are and what you can be. It's not always going to be easy. Life is not a reality show. That's reality. Look, you, me, we are New Jersey. Here it's all about we. In fact, in this state, we can't even pump gas by ourselves. <laughs> and here in this state, we've got the parkway, we've got the turnpike. What we have here is a lot of mile markers. Here people say, what exit are you from? Your, your diploma, it's a mile marker. It's a measurement of how far you can go. It's a measurement of how far you've come, but it doesn't say a thing about how far the future can take you. Your diploma is an anointment, a calling, a charge to use the talents you've nurtured and the knowledge you've gained here to make a contribution. Class is over, but learning isn't. Your diploma is a key to open doors of possibility, not only for yourselves, but for others. So if you want the amazing feeling of pride that you're feeling today to last far beyond today, let's make today and every day that follows about more than your own accomplishments. Make it about the power of we. Because if you do, you'll have a lot more than things worth having. You'll have a life worth living. And you can write that one down in pen. So thank you and congratulations to the class of 2015 I tried to buy you all a gift, but I wasn't sure of sizes and, you know, favorite colors. Um, I did what I do best. I was so inspired by this invitation that I sat down and I wrote you a song. And, uh,
I'll do my best to perform it for you. I've never performed it since I've written it. I, I sang it for the chancellor in the back dressing room. All right, let's try it. Wish me luck. This isn't how your story ends, my friends. It's just a fork along the road. Don't say your prayers, save your amens. You've come this far, but you're still far from home. Don't say goodbye, just say farewell. Write every line you live to tell. Hold your head high like Harry, give him hell. And as the night ignites the day, go make some memories along the way. All right, your song, sing that along, love your life. Learn to laugh, dare to dance, touch the sky. Take pictures each step of the way. Make this the best of the rest of your days. Start your revolution. And I'll see you at the reunion. Some friends will go and some will stay okay Some last a chapter, some a page For some love comes disguised as lust But you'll find love when you find trust someday Do better than our parents did Imperfect wealth and wife and kids Go prod your course and turn it upside down Go live your life Eyes open wide Well, who's to say what's wrong or right? Right? Write your song, sing it long, love your life Learn to laugh, dare to dance, touch the sky Take pictures each step of the way Make this the best of the rest of your days I say Go start your own revolution And I'll see you at the reunion Well, I'll see you at the reunion